Now, how do we know that there's going to be a narrow day of the Lord, namely the second coming of Christ? When we go over to the prophet Joel, in Joel uh, chapter 3, again we have a description of uh, the armies of the nations coming uh, there to the land of Israel. Chapter 3 of Joel, verse 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. God continues on with that theme in verse 9 of Joel 3. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. There cause your mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Now notice this next statement. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. He's describing here the time when the armies of all the nations of the world will be gathered here in the land of Israel, God playing a role in bringing them there so that he can judge them there. Uh, The valley of Jehoshaphat, the word Jehoshaphat means Jehovah judges. And he says that when the armies are there, the day of the Lord is near. In other words, there's a day of the Lord which is about to come when the armies of all the nations are gathered there for judgment uh, in the land of Israel. And then he goes on to say that there'll be cosmic disturbances in conjunction with that day of the Lord when the armies are there. Verse 15, uh, the sun uh, and, and the moon shall be darkened, the stars shall withdraw their shining, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. God's going to go to war. The Lord's going to go to war against these godless forces. Utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. That's when he's going to deliver Israel in his darkest hour. So notice, there's going to be a day of the Lord that's going to come with cosmic disturbances when the armies of all the nations of the world are gathered there. It's about to come when they're gathered there, and then it will come uh, while they are there. When will that take place? Is there anything in the Scriptures that indicate this? Yes. When we go over to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 16, uh, John is recording what will happen in the world when the sixth bowl is poured out. Now let me explain here. When you read Revelation chapter 6 through 19, you will find that throughout the 70th week of Daniel 9, throughout that seven-year tribulation period, there will be three series of judgments poured out. First, seven seals. Then, seven trumpets. Then, seven bowls. So the bowls are the last series of judgments, and John is seeing here the sixth of those seven bowls. In other words, this is the next to the last judgment of the 70th week of Daniel 9. What happens? Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. In Revelation, the dragon is Satan. Out of the mouth of the beast. In Revelation, the beast is the Antichrist out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they, uh, these unclean spirits, are the spirits of devils, literally of demons, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Verse 16, And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. What John is witnessing here is this. The armies of all the nations of the world do not even begin to gather to the land of Israel uh, for Armageddon 
until the sixth bowl. In other words, they don't even begin to gather until the next to the last judgment, almost at the very end of the seven-year tribulation period. So, we're seeing here from Revelation 16, the armies don't even begin to gather there until almost the end of the, of the seven-year tribulation period. According to Joel 3, once they are gathered there, there's a day of the Lord that is near that will have great cosmic disturbances tied in with it, meaning that there's another day of the Lord coming with great cosmic disturbances. When you go over to Joel chapter 2, and in the context, uh, this is referring to the same type of thing he's describing in Joel chapter 3. In Joel chapter 2, he talks again about cosmic disturbances. Joel 2, verse 30, I'll show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Sun will be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day uh, of the Lord come. It's so referring to the same day of the Lord with the same cosmic disturbances as in chapter 3, but here he calls that future day of the Lord the great and terrible day of the Lord. What is this day of the Lord? It's the day when Christ will come out of heaven in his glorious second coming immediately after the seven-year tribulation period, accompanied by great cosmic disturbances that Jesus describes in Matthew chapter 24, uh, beginning with verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This great and terrible day of the Lord with its cosmic disturbances is the precise day that Jesus Christ will come out of heaven in his glorious second coming immediately after the seven-year tribulation period. And according to Revelation chapter 19, when he does that, here will be all the rulers and armies of the nations of the world gathered together against him under Antichrist and the false prophet. And Jesus unleashes the wrath of God upon them and destroys them. Now, what's the point of all this? The point is this. We've seen evidence that there's a broad day of the Lord that will begin at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period and will go right through the thousand-year reign of Christ, the millennium. But now we've seen evidence that there's another day of the Lord, which will be part of the, the broad day, but in a sense is distinct on its own, namely the day that Christ comes out of heaven in his glorious second coming to judge the armies that are gathered there against Israel by the end of the seven-year tribulation period, and Joel calls that the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's the day of the Lord when Christ comes out of heaven, his glorious second coming, that's the great and terrible day of the Lord. And Malachi was saying that Elijah will come before the great and terrible day of the Lord, exactly the same Hebrew construction as in Joel 2. So that uh, it's the, the day of the Lord that Elijah must come before is the second coming of Christ immediately after the tribulation period. In other words, Elijah must come before the narrow day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord, but not before the broad day of the Lord, which will begin at the very beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. So the objection that uh, the day of the Lord can't begin until Elijah comes, and since they believe Elijah won't be here until at least the first half of the 70th week, that therefore the day of the Lord cannot begin at the beginning of the 70th week, is really not valid. Because the day of the Lord before Elijah must come is the great and terrible day of the Lord, which is the second coming of Christ. The day comes out of heaven after the 70th week. It's not the broad day of the Lord, which will cover the entire 70th week of Daniel chapter 9. 